Good afternoon, nerds and chat shows. This is the Nerd Chat Show. It's 1989 and it's nearly time for me to retire, but it's a little bit hard to make light of this year because, to be honest, it's been a bit pants. So, let's instead go for a flight on Royal Mile's new roller coaster. Don't, seriously, don't Google 1989 in the UK. It is grim. Ah, oh, yeah, welcome to 1989, you guys. Yep, it is just one year until the 1990 tour, and we need to add one more exciting addition to truly take part in those coaster wars. And as we know, Arrow are very much on the scene, and their new suspended coaster has hit the market twice. So while the Royal Mile is in our actual universe, it stands to reason they would have purchased a, well, let's be honest, a problematic coaster model. And if you don't know why this one is problematic just by looking at it, then you definitely go into by the end of this section. But this is the coaster that we've got, and this is what we're going for. I always wanted it to sit here, even if it is in the most stuttery part of the park, so I make my apologies now. <laughs> but hey, it's behind the dance hall, which, by the way, is actually still kitted out as if it's 1930. I think I need to do an inside refit. <laughs> but it's sitting here because of the uh, the sight lines that it produces, particularly when it's behind the, uh, the shuttle loop and when you look at the park from this side. Uh, and I also wanted it to sit on the side of a hill, and I wanted it to be a tricky, problematic layout as well. I mean, I could have quite easily had the station here where it is, now and the lift hill just jutting off up into the uh, up into the hill but hey nemesis called they want their everything back <laughs> chacho Ch Ch needs to do something original at some point in his in his youtube career so that's what we've got here but what it does mean is i think we need to lose these four buildings and i'm a bit sad but i need to let go we've made tough tougher decisions in the park so far so this is the layout then we're starting in the station here, we're going to do a bit of a UE uh, around this way, a U-turn, and then it comes into a bit of a brake run, and then it comes into the long, drawn-out, shallow lift hills that Arrows are completely famous for. Yeah, 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 it takes forever to get to the top of the lift hill. And it comes into the first turn, and it does your typical Arrow things. It does all of your usual swoops, your turns, your S-bends, etc., until you hit... This bit, yes, you keyboard warriors and purists are going to be salivating away, just waiting to correct me. Oh, Chacho, this is not realistic and therefore I'm going to dislike. And I don't care because the prototype for the arrows had, <laughs> that was harsh, the prototype for the arrows had inversions on it. And uh, I wanted this to set itself apart from all of the rest of the suspended coaster competition. Now, we know in 2023 stroke 2024 that this is going to have been an absolute nightmare on the maintenance and the wear and tear. And the coaster either won't exist in 2023 or would have, it would have had this removed. But there is nothing out there that's like it. And this park needs a coaster that sets itself away from everything else without stealing other people's records and other people's stuff. Could have put a stand up in here, but we would have been stealing Drayton Manor. So this is <laughs> where we are sitting. Uh, I need to get this done. I will see you in a minute.
Oh, you guys, I think this is going to feel like a really disappointing anticlimactic mid part of the episode because, well, Arrow Coasters are just so polite and unassuming. They just sit here on the sightline, all generic and all a bit jank and in the stuttering part of the park. <laughs> but actually, there is quite a lot to talk about here. I mean, all of the supports and stuff have gone in and it sits there quite nicely on the sightline. And I did have these grand visions of the station building being this beautiful Swiss mountain in Lodge, a little bit like Avalanche of Blackpool is, but I thought, no, actually, these coasters are expensive, and just like we did with the corkscrew, let's strip it right back and keep it as simple as we can, especially as it's in an unassuming inoffensive part of the park is just off the beaten track ever so slightly we could have made a massive deal with this area like we could have had all of this being a plaza and ah, oh, so many design possibilities we could have done but this is all deliberate i have deliberately made this a bit crappy I've al i'm also taking a few liberties with design as well and i asked you to respect that um but it, oh, i think this is turning out amazingly like as I said, I had these grand, grand ideas of this station building being this Swiss Alpine Lodge. And actually, I ended up taking cues from uh, Southport Pleasure Beach's Cyclone Coaster, which I know was a wooden coaster. It's a different coaster type. But the actual station shape is just perfect for what I wanted. Remember, it's still, it's still the late 80s, early 90s. So we are still a bit generic in design. And that's that's what we're going for here. So think, think like panel roofs and spotlights through the ceiling and very like almost cold architecture. But we are starting to uh, experiment with architecture, you know, like we cantilever overhangs and all of this sort of, sort of stuff. However, at its core, it is still a concrete base and it's very much a concrete base. It's just there and it is just happening. And then so in the uh, in the maintenance area, I have uh, started to kit this out. I'm taking cues from the real life counterparts, Big Bad, Big Bad Wolf and Vortex at Canada's Wonderland and stuff. And so this is uh, this is how this is. It is a transfer track. And so um, I've put that in and I did. I wanted to make this a little bit different. I didn't want the uh, station shed, not station shed, sorry, the maintenance shed to be here because I wanted to use it for the queue line. So actually what I've done is I've moved it around here and then you just have enough track to hold all three trains and then you do all of your maintenance and services in here. This is one of the design liberties that I have taken. It's not out of the realms of the possibility that the park would do this. It's just you don't often see it. Uh, and then I've started the process of putting the shed in. So it's exactly the same as the transfer track, right? Oh, <laughs> it's just the same blueprint. Uh, but I'm just going to put a roof and stuff on here. Then it needs its maintenance area clutter and all of that sort of stuff. So actually in the station itself, I haven't done any of the kitting out in here yet. Uh, it does need all of its uh, all of its fine details and, and kitting out, as I say. Uh, but I have started to get a feel for it. So I've put the fences up between the station and the actual ride area. So it's blocking itself off. But it is ultimately going to be an open, air, not an open air station, but an open sided station. I have also gone in and put the supports for the station track in here. Because the game doesn't do that for you. So we've kind of got to do it for the inverse coasters would it have this many supports no probably not but i have decided to to do this many because it fits quite nicely with the um the air gates and stuff that we've got again another design liberty that i'm taking but i quite like how the station's going to be it's going to be simple and unassuming it's it's kind of a bit of a throwback actually to wild of muse when we put falcon's fortress in it's a very similar feel because it's built at around about the same time so it stands to reason that the blueprints and stuff will probably be uh, redone and then down here with the start of the lift hill i did originally and i think it's probably going to be in the time lapse i did originally have the two walls in here and it was going to be enclosed not enclosed but it's going to be it's going to be like inside this this little trench and whatever but i thought no this doesn't feel right i didn't really want it to be like that so i actually ended up doing it as a dugout or is it a dig out? Is it a dig out or a dug out if you're talking about it in present tense? Um, let's say dug out. It's a dug out and I've put in the um, the pebbles and stuff already down here. Again, it was originally concrete based, but I thought no, it just needed to be pebbles, a, a temporary surface and stuff. And then I have just put in the escape stairs along here. They are wood. I don't know if I'm going to paint them or not. I haven't quite decided. It feels like I probably should paint them, but actually it's wood, so it's going to be brown. Let's just play it out and see but ultimately you have the escape stairs and those escape stairs then do come into the final break run that lives uh, that lives here so it's all kind of complete and it's all it's all done and then we've also got the um uh, the supports that are going on on the lift hill i again i was going to use the ones from world of view muse you know i was going to bring them in as drag them in as a blueprint and reuse them but actually when i looked at them they weren't quite 
They weren't quite fitting of this park. They were right for the park that they were put in, but it, it just wasn't fitting for this park. So I actually ended up taking the cues from the Arrow Coaster, uh, or the Vacoma Coaster, whichever one it was, the Corkscrew. Um, and I ended up creating new ones. So we've got the supports that are living here, and then we've just got the, um, uh, the signpost poles just on here as the as the side bracing uh, side bracing structures and then because i am building this on the side of a hill and these attempt technically supposed to have flat land i've actually put in all of the concrete braces um and the concrete footers all along here to make it uh, to make it make sense and then over in this direction i have also put in um these uh, custom supports here uh, so and then they are actually adjoining with the track below it so they, they're serving uh, they're serving two purposes so it, the game gets rid of these because of the clearances and stuff but actually they would need them need them in here now technically would these supports probably be these supports yeah I think they might be but I don't think this is carrying a lot of weight at this point because by the time it gets to it gets to that point, it's still being supported by the support structure here. Oh, I need to recolor these um, to the support structure here. And then by the time it gets here, it's supported here. So uh, I think you could probably just about get away with it. But should it be a different one? Yeah, probably. Uh, and then... In the actual area itself, I've started to do all of the fencing and started to get a feel for how this is all going to look. So, like, the stairs and stuff are all in here. I just need to do some decorating. I kind of miss the three the three shops that were here, you know. I wanted to put something else in in this space, but maybe future update. Uh, photo booths and stuff need to come at some point. They are starting to be introduced into rides now, so maybe it's going to be retro retrofitted. But I have also started the external perimeter fence all along here, and I've also put one along here as well. So, like, we don't need to necessarily uh, fence off this area from this area, but you may have maintenance workers up in the top area here. So you might just want to separate the area and you know it's not necessarily don't die fencing it's just a please don't walk this way in case you die fencing <laughs> it's the new that's the new name for it <laughs> and then elsewhere i have just started to change some of the terrain now you do have to make these really important oh corkscrew time ta-da yeah, it's going to be such a maintenance nightmare for the future. Uh, you do have to make these really important decisions about whether to use a retaining wall, like I've done here, or whether you actually just dig out the terrain and change the, the topography of the of the terrain like I have done here. Um, there is no real right answer. Like, this retaining wall could go all the way around and it would be just as correct as, as changing, the, changing the topography. The only thing that's really going to tell you whether you need a retaining wall or not is what sits on top of the wall. So, because this is a, a, an access road and it gets quite close to the track here, you probably wouldn't want to be bringing vans and lorries down here and causing all sorts of vibrations and stuff in the land. So, you would end up with a, a, retaining, a retaining wall instead um, and that would then absorb all of the shock of the stuff. I mean, this isn't a busy road. Don't get me wrong. It's not the M25. It's not going <laughs> to carry thousands and thousands of vehicles or anything but you do sort of want to want to consider that um, and then the queue line itself really unassuming it's just there it's a cattle pen and again i did this for falcon's fortress it feels very familiar um i'm not even sorry because these were would have been built around about the same time so just put cattle pen in holds lots of people because it's close to the entrance of the park and away you go so there it is sitting on the sightline just as it goes through the corkscrew uh, with with the stutter uh loving it Better carry on, hadn't I, really? See you in a minute.
I wonder how many people are going to have jumped the gun and told us in the comments that the Bat at King Island's original concept had an inversion just so they can score knowledge bragging points on YouTube. Guess we're going to find out. Here's ours. I don't hate it. At least not anymore. I quite like how this has turned out, actually. It just sits sort of like unassumingly on the sight line. It's exactly what the Royal Mile needed. It didn't need to be themed. It needed just to be there and happy days it is. It doesn't have a name, by the way. So should we kick it old school? Pop your names in the comments, please, guys. Um, I'll stick it to the vote. And then if I get it done in time, I can put it into the 1990 tour. And then we can uh, all blaze in the glory of the of the new name. So think late, late 80s, suspended coaster. You know what to do. Names in the comments, please, guys. Uh, here's the station. Kicking it old school. Kicking it classic. Kicking it simple. It doesn't need to be any more than this. This is the theme of the series. Particularly... Oh, that's a good shot. Look at that. Um, that's almost thumbnail worthy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it doesn't need to be any more than this, particularly as it's probably already on the kill list because of that corkscrew. Uh, when I was thinking it through, I don't really know what the practical solution to having this corkscrew would be other than reprofiling just this bit and, and like making the, um, uh, the, the turn wider. Might not even survive, you know. Uh, anyway, that's tomorrow's problem because this is the station. I need to show you around. I've kept it really, really simple with the stuff in here. Uh, I didn't want it to be any more than this. I have used the Oblivion font uh, that's available on the workshop because it fits perfectly, right? It's that whole almost, as we now look at it, old school modern take on the future. Um, it's a weird thing to look back in 2023 at all of the stuff in 1998 that looks really futuristic at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of neon kicking around. Uh, again, keeping it blue and orange and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, lots of coloured lighting. That was a thing in the late 80s, early 90s. A lot of the mood stuff was created by different sets of lighting. Uh, ooh, hooray! And then coming over to the uh, maintenance area, we've just got this bit here. A uh, little bit of touching up going on. Um, I've put some rails and runners and stuff underneath the uh, underneath the transfer track, so it actually looks like a transfer track. Tidied up the catwalk and the walkway. These would be used as evacuation platforms. They do move, so if you needed to evacuate the platform from uh, anywhere, these can just be moved and you can get the people off uh, as you need to. As it is the late 80s, early 90s, I don't know if you can see it because of the sunlight, uh, but these, this design of sign now exists. This was introduced in the late 80s. Of course, we are familiar with this because I use it everywhere. It's the danger keep out sign. Um, so yeah, in the UK, this design of sign was actually introduced and we, get, we now get to use it and I'm so excited. It's such a stupid thing to be excited about <laughs> also excited about being able to use is the Indian sandstone this was a massive thing in the 90s like everything suddenly had in Indian sandstone uh, putting down because it was like this new revolutionary brickwork everyone was using herringbone brick and then suddenly this came along and it's absolutely beautiful so of course we're going to use it here we're spending some money at least right and this is now a thing. So the whole safety signage outside of the ride to tell you about heart conditions, back problems, etc. That now also exists in the late 80s. So I've started to put that down. I do need to do a complete modernization of the park at some point. Um, and that's where we're going to start introducing concepts like queue time boards. Um, and all of that sort of stuff. So I'll add all of that in, in a later date. But this is the first time we are actually actually using it here's the queue then very boring and unassuming it's going to be an absolute nightmare in the heat uh, but luckily we don't have summers here in the uk so it's all good to go <laughs> and then you've got the second bit of the catwalk here and then just this slight extension coming up um i'm starting to sort of get a feel for how air at alton towers was going to do it i mean i know it's a good 12 10 12 years until we get it but the concepts that lead to Air's design are currently being invented right now because we are in the late 80s. So some of that like modern stuff that we're used to now would have started to be invented now. Uh, here's the maintenance area then. Lots of stuff kicking around in here. I've cluttered it out with uh, your usual things that you find in here. And again, we're finding more and more modern equipment now that we're in the, um, now that we're in the effectively the nineties. So we're good to go with some of the, some of the stuff. We're gonna start finding that the builds are going to become more and more recognisable to a Chacho build because we're getting more and more modern as we go along. So uh, I have also just 
put a few weeds and stuff around here, you know, just that whole scrubbery, brushery type, is brushery even a word? I don't think it's a word. Uh, scrubbery and brush in this area, concrete pad, all that sort of stuff. It's very unassuming. Um, I think in the future, it's possible they might actually put sides on here um, just to protect the area, the work area. But for now, it is what it is. Remember, because we're in the 80s and the 90s, all of the health and safety stuff that we recognise today don't exist because the events that caused those things to exist haven't happened yet it's a really weird time to be like building in uh, so yeah the actual custom supports i have tidied up there were a few little strays and as it turns out it was a little bit off kilter as well so i've just tidied all of this up and it looks so much better and um, these were in originally but i just put the safety signs above it because this is where you're going to get vans and stuff coming down here and um, i have added the extra bit of forest i mean i always did say in the 1930s i think i was going to uh, and i actually have so i've just put the uh, put the forest in Whether I'm going to put stuff down here I don't know I think this might actually end up being the car park um in the the future so when we start moving the car parks and stuff I think this is going to be the location of the car park and I also need to bring a service road around this way because that's what I said in the log flume episode so uh coming down here lots of scrubbery uh lots of bushes and stuff put in and uh yeah this this area now feels much more like it should do uh, and I am totally totally here for it um, i have checked all of the clearances on the track i did need to make a slight tweak here uh, this one was just a little bit too close for comfort so i have just um lowered this bit of track and actually it makes the corkscrew ride a little bit better um as you can see it's just coming around now right so it's going to come down this way uh, and then it actually levels out quite nicely in time for the corkscrew so uh, it actually rides much much better by having just an ever so slightly steeper uh, decline on this one um, and actually it also makes the rest of the uh, rest of the layout make a bit more sense in terms of speed and pacing so there you go that's the bit that I've uh, that I've redone and then into uh, into the break run so lots and lots of like final touching up and stuff that's that's been put on this one but one more time this is everything as it sits on the sight line and oh, it's now just good. It's going to be a bit sad to get rid of it, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, it's really weird. But there's the two. There are the two arrows. Well, should we say it's an arrow? Sod it. Let's say it's an arrow. There's the one arrow. There's the second arrow. Taking pride of place. Yeah. All right. I'm sold. I'm here for it. Guys, thank you so much for getting to the end of the episode. As always, I really do appreciate it. You know what to do. Like, comment, share, blah, 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 blah. blah. Don't forget the names in the comments, please. Uh, that's the important bit so we can get that out on uh, the vote. I reckon we go for a ride, right? Have you ever ridden a suspended coaster with a corkscrew? Let's find out how it rides. Take care of yourselves, guys. See you soon. Bye!